Uh, I think the overall umbrella of the different themes that run through my work is um, about the fact that I've lived in three different countries and belong to each of them, but also don't completely belong. And so all my work is about being, I suppose, transcultural or being between, living between cultures. For example, an Indian from India is about me being an immigrant in the United States. Because my accent is also British, people can't pinpoint where I'm from. And when I say I'm an Indian, they sometimes respond by saying a Native American Indian. So I have to say an Indian from India. So it started this body of work where I looked at the history of the Native Americans and found parallels to um, the colonial history in India. And using some of the 19th century photographs, I uh, paired them with self-portraits to kind of challenge some of the stereotypes of, um, say, an immigrant living here or assumptions that we make about people who are, you know, the other. I was born in England, but then my parents came back to India when I was about 10. I think since 86, I've been photographing in India, um, and it's called Memories of India. So the images are about my experience about growing up in India and I use um, a Holger toy camera and the camera allows me to be more invisible when I'm walking on the streets but also the lens creates this really beautiful vignetting so the images have a much more memory-like feel to them. But there's not a lot of faces, there is a certain distance in the images. When I was in India, when you go to college you have to decide on your major before you go to college and then you can't change, unlike the US. And I chose to do mathematics, which uh, I have no idea how I ever uh, got through it. But um, the good thing about the college I went to is we had an optional subject, and I got into a photography class. And my memory of it was there was about 20 of us with one camera and two rolls of film for the whole semester. But that turned me on to photography. And after working in India for about six years, realizing that I couldn't go through um, you know, being a traditional Indian woman in terms of an arranged marriage. And I decided I might as well do what I wanted to do. And so I came here to study photography. I came to the US in 92. Had plans of going back, but um, you know, plans changed. Bollywood satirized. Uh, India has the largest movie industry in the world. The uh, majority of the industry is based in Bombay, which is now Mumbai. And the movies themselves, especially, say, 20 years ago, were very melodramatic and stereotypical. And so I take photographs of the posters that are on the walls, uh, reinterpret them on the computer to make my own uh, statements of my experience as a woman growing in, up in India. So they're more of a feminist, uh, point of view, I'd say. It's more my critique of the culture that I grew up in. I'm pretty committed to teaching at a state university. I get a lot of satisfaction from that. I teach photography. I mean, since URI is a research university, they support not only my teaching, but consider my artwork as my research, and it's given me a lot of flexibility and support to be able to continue my work. So it's called regeneration where I've been uh, photographing three or more generations of women. I've actually photographed one which is six generations of women, so I still haven't put that together yet. Most of the people I've photographed I actually don't know. I, people have recommended, and I just go into their houses, look through their family albums, and I decide on a photograph, scan it, and then take photographs of them in similar poses that I then, uh, through Photoshop, make into these animations. So I'm, trying to collapse the past, the present, into a single uh, frame. And they become very kind of, I don't know, graceful snippets of time, I suppose. It's more of a collaboration where I get these women to uh, reenact these old photographs, try to create the same kind of expressions, and obviously stand in the same kind of poses. I mean, what I do is I 
basically go into these strangers' houses and they allow me to rearrange the space so that I can set up my lights. Um, I take photographs for them first, for, you know, nice family photographs and include the rest of the family too in those. Then I take the photographs back and, um, you know, edit them for the different kind of situations that I've photographed. Then cut out the people from the backgrounds, which is a lot of, you know, detail, Photoshop kind of work. Uh, I then create the animations. I always keep tweaking and retweaking them and they almost feel like music to me in terms of the pacing. I did actually play the piano for some time when I was young and I feel as if that kind of is coming into my photography now. They're presented on high definition TVs that are covered with a mat and an old frame. So from a distance you think it's an old photograph. But as you get closer, you start noticing these transitions that are happening. And then sometimes aging, sometimes getting younger. Um, so it's about, I mean, I think for me, it's also about the aging and passage of time and looking back. Um, we were planning the shoot because my mother and my stepdaughter um, were with me. Photographed them as the three generations. About, uh, yeah, it was nine years ago, I had done a piece from the Indian from India where I had um, a traditional Native American mother and child and had paired it with my stepdaughter and myself as a contemporary mother and stepchild. The way that my mother's been introduced into this three generations is through my relationship with my stepdaughter. And so I decided to use that as the original photograph and then bring um, my mother into now what is our relationship. I don't see myself as a filmmaker or a video artist. I still see them as photographs. My name is Desikan, Desikan Devrajan. Hi, my name is Rehana Sitar. Actually, I chose initially Arnold Brown. It's called The Virtual Immigrant, and it's... Um, actually, what happened was I was in India at a party, and I met this person who seemed more American than I am. And I was convinced for some reason he was born and brought up in San Francisco. But I was surprised to hear he was actually a call center worker. And it got me thinking about, as much as I love being in America, there is a certain sadness about not being able to still be in India. Part of me is there, part of me is here. Uh, whereas a virtual immigrant is able to go back to India at the end of the workday, go back and forth between America and India without actually leaving their country. You know, did these three or four hour interviews with them and then put, put it all together in a 10 minute audio piece. And then I photographed them both in clothes that they would wear to go to the office and also clothes that they would wear for a traditional Indian event, like a wedding, which invariably meant wearing Western and Indian clothes. And that was completely their choice. Later that transformed into making these lenticular prints where I take two images and the software splices them and reassembles them, put a plastic lens on top of that. So from one angle, you see them in their Indian clothes and from the other angle in their Western clothes. I don't have the personality to be a photojournalist. I soon discovered that. But I still want to say something through my work. Now I'm realizing that my work is photo-based, but I'm not a traditional photographer in terms of taking a picture and that being the end of the process. I tend to use images that are in the popular culture, whether they're, say, the Bollywood posters and then manipulate them or taking the old photographs of the Native Americans and then pairing them with the self-portraits, and now taking these archival photographs and then manipulating them with the present generation. So I seem to work with existing imagery and you know, take a photograph, but then manipulate it to work within that. Mm -hmm.